What's going on? Move the mouse here back in City Skylines with our Let's Play Season 7, Episode number 44. And in today's episode, I thought we could go through pretty much everything other than traffic. Everything that we didn't already go over, at least. So, uh, just, I guess, a quick look. 81%. Not too bad. We know where some of our problems are. Still very busy coming off industrial. Super, super busy. I've got a, some lane change problems happening down there. Uh, this strip really busy, the turbine busy, and then uh, Market Street in general, where there's a lot of commercial, um, is pretty busy. But other than that, it's it's not too bad. There's some spots. There's a stoplight there. And a little heavy over here at the cargo terminal itself, or cargo hub. But we're not really going to tackle any of the, uh, the traffic issues today. Uh, today or really these, these couple weeks are all about getting this city in a good spot so we can put it away for just a little bit. And I'm thinking of starting a new one up to start 2020. Uh, most likely a console-based campus build, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Pollution, we're in pretty good shape. We've got uh, zero ground, zero water, thanks to the Eden Project. We do have some buildings that pollute a little bit, industrial and recycling. The buildings themselves are technically polluted, but it doesn't really spread to any of the buildings in the area. A little bit of spread here where we've got a concentration of recycling plants. And then some of this is unavoidable where we're processing stuff. So this is taking ore into metals. This is all our oil and plastics production, oil and petroleum. This is a mess, but you can see we've got it set up in a way where it's just dropping off as it gets to the water. So it's not polluting our water. The, uh, the factory, some of the wood and farm processing, uh, unfortunately, it does introduce a little bit of pollution, but again, as you can see, it's not really spreading anywhere, which is good. Now, from a noise pollution perspective, um, things are a little different here. You know, we've got some really noisy segments of the map, but you can see it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good here where these people live. Let's see if we can thicken those trees up a bit, at least right here along the highway. Let's see if that makes any kind of difference. Or if we're even squeezing any trees in there. It doesn't look like we're, we're getting too many in there. But just so we have as much buffer as possible there. Let's do that and then we'll take a look again at the noise pollution. Trees do help. Trees do help absorb it. So if we, if we come in here, take all these trees out, we'll actually see that, yeah, that noise bubble gets bigger, right? You can see that the lines start spreading out a lot, actually. So let's remedy that and put our trees back in. And get as many as we can in between those houses and the highway to sort of soften that up a bit. And you can see it, it makes it from, you know, a, a really tough to live in um, noise polluted zone right near the highway to, yeah, having a little bit of pollution that spills over, mostly from this subway over here, unfortunately. Um, that's that's kind of the the bits that are spilling into our little neighborhoods there But for the most part things are pretty quiet. We've got you know a couple busy streets here. This one's busy because It delivers traffic over this highway, which We really don't need Let's get rid of that Because I think that was helping us quite a bit when we had uh, garbage trucks coming from over there But I've got those turned off to see Throw it back in day I've got those turned off to see if we develop any garbage problems. Right now we've got four across the city. Um, I do have some recycled plants spread out at some of the different areas. Um, I pointed at them. I didn't, you know, the cargo airport, the regular airport, industrial area, they all have their own individual recycling plants as does the school here. But the trucks will go as far as they can. So those, you know, aren't just handling this area. You could with traffic manager, if we did vehicle restrictions on a segment of road, we could say, for example, you know, here, garbage trucks can't leave this area. You know, if we prevent the ability for those trucks to go on that segment of road, all they can do is turn back in and stay within this loop. I think we'd have to turn them off over here also. But we could make that work. But I wanted to keep an eye on things, see where garbage piles up with these all turned off. And then we'll slowly turn off and remove uh, ones that we don't need because we've got 
that ultimate recycling plant that's covering quite a bit of the city. But again, noise pollution wise, I mean, this is something that we can come in here. Let's see where our trees are at. 224,000 of 262,000. So we could come in and do a couple things to, to ease some of the noise on some of these houses, right? One is trees, one is uh, sound separated highways with the, the barriers. But let's see what the trees do here. Well, I guess we'll hold on a second. Put the list away. Look at the noise again over here. Which is not terrible, right? But we can make it better. I think we can leave the tool out while we go back to noise pollution. Yeah. So that will reduce kind of that spread coming down into these neighborhoods. Just a little bit. You have to give it a second to, to recalculate, but... It starts to seep back a little bit. Now we could do, again, some uh, some sound barriers on these. That would help a bit. They kind of get them automatically whenever there's certain uh, inclines, as you can see here at that split. But noise pollution for the most part is pretty contained to main strips where we have commercial. And then in behind there, I've got all my residential. So. A couple residents are affected, but it's not too, too bad. I've built in these little bits of, you know, buffer zone in here. And my intent was, at some point, to fill those in a little bit more with trees. But we're getting a little tight on what we have available for tree budget, so... We'll keep coming to that, fill in little spots, see where the worst noises are, and uh, and do something like that to, uh, to soften up some of that exposure to the noise in some of those residential areas. Now, something that's very, very important that we need to review, because it's been a while, is fire safety. I have terrible luck with fires on my maps. Those of you who have been watching the longest um, definitely will know that uh, it's no strange occurrence for a massive fire to burst out. So, first thing I want to do is come check our tree coverage, and we're actually very, very light in spots. So, we're going to cover as much as we can so that our beautiful landscape doesn't burn down it's a relatively flat map so these will see pretty far and we could turn off fire spreading that's not as fun so we'll make sure most of the areas around our major populated areas are good Gee, should we put one out here in the uh, in the golf course there? This is just a little bit light over here, so let's get a just make sure our beautiful national forest doesn't burn down. Birdsong National Park. Back into uh, back into fire safety. Okay, so where were we? Pretty well covered. We don't have anything built over here, so I'm gonna take a chance with that. But I guess we could put one there to kind of see a little bit across the river. And let's do one more there. Just so that our real population centers are well covered. All these come with a budget, so... Unfortunately, we can't spam them everywhere. But where there's lots and lots of trees, and we are going to build this up eventually for a uh, port. So I'll drop a couple of those in there. I guess we could have coverage over here by the airport. So maybe what I'll do at some point is is kind of, it's not a bad idea, is to come in if you have money, if you got 20 million in the bank like I do, you could come in here and kind of delete all the ones that you've dropped in over time and then space them out a little bit better so there's less um, overlap, less redundant coverage. In the long run, it will save you money because these all have upkeep. So the less of them you need, the better. So it, it's something to think about, you know, more money in the short term by, by moving them around um, or uh, replacing them all together, bulldozing them and replacing them. You can move structures for cost or if you have the move it mod, you can just move whatever you want. Uh, if I actually click on it. So, you know, we could just move the building itself without any kind of cost. Without move it mod, what does it cost us? 1800 bucks to do that. That's pretty crazy. Man, that, speaking of move it, that is ugly. 
How did that happen? How did I, like, finish that and say, like, oh yeah, that's fine. That was definitely a fix-it-later project. Bring that out like that. Too much. That's a little better. That will work. That'll work for now. This is not the beautification episode. We're going to do transport off on its own also, but back to fire safety for a moment. We're in pretty good shape. This is definitely a little light over here. So why don't we upgrade? Why don't we upgrade this one? So we'll bulldoze this. And we'll do one of the larger firehouses over here. It's not too imposing. I think that's okay. And that should give us a little bit better coverage over this way. Once it becomes an active building to play. There we go. So yeah, we had a couple buildings over here. A little, little bit in the red. But they're still on Green Street, so they've got good coverage. We should be able to get out there okay. Um, what we could look at is where our depots are. So our depots are over here. We've got one. Uh, now, something to consider with the depots is when the fire happens, the helicopters... Ah, there we go. Perfect timing. They leave the depot um, to head to the fire, and then they need to pick up water, though. So you see, they're going to have to go to water. So generally best to have these near water in the first place so that they can pick the water up and then beeline to wherever they need to get to. Which in this case is right back to base because the fire got put out by the ground trucks, it looks like. But that's definitely something to consider because if you put that way over here inland and there's a fire right here at the amusement park, they have to fly over here to fly back over there. So... Generally, try and keep your uh, helicopter depots near water and save some of that uh, backtracking. So where do we have depots? Actually, it's a perfect example of where you don't want to put one, right? Uh, we've got one over here that covers kind of the, the country club and the national park, hopefully. And it looks like we've got another one over here right near the water. Kind of very central to everything, which is good. Ooh, and another one over here. So we'll definitely want to look at that and one over here by the campus. Those aren't necessarily overlapped in the uh, the best ways. We're reducing some of the... I'm trying to get a close-up on the fire here for everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you for putting that out. Whoa. Hey. So fire safety, we're in pretty good shape. Where are we at from a crime coverage standpoint? 5% crime rate's not too bad when you look at 9% unemployment. Our jail capacities are in good shape. We don't have a prison. I don't believe. Do we? Did we? I don't think we did. So we could look at putting in a prison. We don't really need it. We've got 200 criminals. Um, if I was going to put it somewhere, I'd probably want to get it out off on its own over here. I don't know what we could do with it, though. You know what, though? it's Right now, it's a problem that we don't need. Um, you know what we need over here on an island? And we'll break ground on this today. But this isn't going to be... This is going to be for part two of the series. So let's get in let's get a kind of a a road right down the middle of this island. Kind of a central strip, if you will. And then we can come over into uniques over here. Do we Do we have a casino already? Did I drop a casino in and forget about this? So, so, where is the casino? It's telling me... It's telling me it's already been placed, but it hasn't been placed. 
I know it hasn't been placed. We'll do that for now. It's here. It's in. It's off. It's been hovered over with a bulldozer. Before they even had one customer, we've reminded them. Um, reminded them that if they don't pay their taxes, the B button is just a click away. So, police coverage-wise, again, we're in, we're in pretty good shape. We're in the green. There's very little crime. There's the occasional building that just doesn't think that it has police coverage. That See, that building just corrected itself. We didn't do anything. But occasionally that will happen. For whatever reason, that was happening a lot to the uh, campus administration building, the main building that defines your campus. Pretty good, though, overall. And we're not going to do the work on the jail right now. Um, at some point down the road, maybe we will. Uh, we have a population of 79,000. We can see our seniors make up about 26% of our population. Um, adults, they, they they basically get older. So, so this large adult population will become a pretty large senior population, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, that you can kind of see when death waves are going to happen. If you have a really large piece of this that is committed to seniors, well, those are going to be a lot of dead people soon. Sorry, but those are the facts of life and the facts of cities and can kind of give you an idea if you keep an eye on that, um, you know, when when you have a ma less manageable death wave on the uh, on the verge of happening. Outside connection wise, we haven't really looked at this at all, but like who's exporting stuff? Anybody? So we're exporting a little bit. We're exporting the ships that we're creating, some of the petroleum and plastics, metals, and glass. So we've got those set to balance, so they'll try and empty them out, and hopefully it's something we need at a local factory, and if not, it gets shipped off a map. And it's the same thing over here for paper and animal products and flour. Uh, we'll use it if we can, and if not, we'll ship it and sell it off map as far as who's importing stuff well we're still importing some of these crops but it looks like i'm going to guess all the other ones are full we're not in the process of importing at least full enough um and then we have a couple of industry buildings over here which are importing some goods uh, a lot of the commercial are importing goods so maybe we can look at in the future ways to move some of this stuff around town with uh, an internal cargo line, interno, internal cargo line, interno cargo line. Not, uh, not quite, but almost so close, so close to what I wanted to say. So uh, import, export, commercial, definitely seeing the most import of goods. We've got uh, some import happening over here in the industrial area. Looks like everything that they're making is being sold in the city. At least from my take on it, uh, land value. Don't really need to worry about it thanks to uh, Eden Project. But you can see there's there's the really high land value where stuff is built, basically. And then the soon-to-be high land value as soon as something is built there. Um, so we're basically all in those, those top two tiers. But ba uh, the Eden Project just kind of cascades that effect everywhere. It's great. We haven't been worrying about resources on map. Looks like I did have a potential for an oil uh, area there. Forest, or try to include a little bit of everything in this map. Uh, if you're late to the game, I did build this map. You'll find it and all the mods and assets linked in the collection description down below. Uh, the first couple episodes this season actually focused on uh, building this map. And I try to include a little bit of something for everybody in terms of resources, but we haven't uh, actually tapped into them. Uh, Leisure-wise, this is definitely definitely something that we need to come look at because it looks like I was spamming a lot of parks and stuff over here and everybody's got something that they can do over here but then these last couple developments no parks no parks over here and uh, and that can ultimately affect people's happiness so um, that I think should be kind of a uh, stage two or, or part two of this season uh, when we pick up Portsmouth again at some point in the relatively near future um, we'll definitely want to look at that. So um, kind of beautifying or at least increasing the uh, leisure level around town will definitely be something that we want to focus on. Let's do a couple quick ones over here just because 
it looks pretty dry to kind of see the effect that some of these have. So uh, a nice cheap one that I like, and I am a dog person, so I like to drop dog parks in there. They're pretty cheap upkeep, 5,000 to drop in, $40 a week upkeep. If you've registered a Paradox account, $1,000, $16 per week upkeep. Paradox Plaza, pretty nice to drop some of those around town. But in this case, let's spam some dog parks around our residential area where we can without overwriting a lot of stuff. And then let's see how far that happiness effect cascades. Not, not too, too far. If we did a Paradox Plaza, maybe somewhere near our commercial areas, that might actually have a little bit bigger of an effect. Yeah, not really. Not too much better. So we can drop some of these around. Um, let's do, can we do a little Paradox Plaza across from the high school? That'd be kind of cool. And then we'll get rid of that house. That's Carl Fredrickson's house. No balloons though. So, sorry Carl. Um, stop it. Stop it. Uh, that one's going out. No big deal. No big deal. Okay. So parks, where were we? We drop we drop a couple dog parks in. It's a very limited effect, right? But if we spam a couple of them and they start to overlap. We haven't come back and done uh, footpaths, which we should do at some point. Where can we get this one? That one's a little messy. Slipping into this existing neighborhood. So maybe we'll do that. Throw one on the corner there. That's dog parks. We, we, we'll drop in some basketball courts, tennis courts, and spam some different, different things around. Maybe we'll build an actual park out of a couple of these blocks. Um, you could even, in theory, technically make this whole area a park, even though it doesn't, you know, have to make the most sense in the real world. Um, but that helps kind of raise land value and happiness around there, depending on how decorated it is. Um, so we'll, we'll do something like that. But I, I wanted to drop a couple in because I don't want them, the, the Sims to be unhappy. I got yelled at once uh, for using the term Sims in City Skylines, but it's Sims with a C, C-I-M's. And, uh, and yes, that is correct. Districts, we don't really worry about that. Uh, terrain height. One of the things I definitely want to do, because I really like it every time I see it, is over here, you can see, let me let me come over here with the terrain height tool up. So you can see we've, we've, we've raised a couple of little areas here, and then kind of softly sloped around it. And uh, over here on this outside connection of the map, I've just tunneled through and it comes out the other side. But that way, when we're looking from over here, you don't see the edge of the map. You don't see the infinite void, right? And uh, and it has a much better look. I mean, it, it does kind of fade off at the right angle, but I, I'm going to raise up the ground just a little bit so that we're seeing, you know, the sides of hills and not the edge of the map. And uh, we'll kind of fold in the edges a little bit. If I wanted to, the other thing I could do is I could then come back here and take out all these trees. But I'm going to leave that for when I actually run out of trees, which we're not too far off at 225,000 of 262,000. Um, certainly when we start to fill in some of these areas by the highway to cut back on some of the noise, it, they go quick. So we may need to, uh, to you do that little trick and borrow some trees from uh, off on the side of the map. We don't need to worry about heat. Excellent, 61 point, 62 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Just 62 Fahrenheit. Forget the point. Uh, road maintenance, we haven't really done much on this front either. So the interesting thing about road maintenance and condition is, you know, the condition is red. Red is normal. It's not necessarily bad, but we can actually get faster performance on some of our roads, and, and I haven't done any of that here. Um, I believe it's under the maintenance here. Park maintenance building. Uh, maybe if we go to roads, there's road maintenance. Oh man, I got a bunch of stuff I haven't looked at. I don't think I've looked at any of these suspension bridges, the Golden Gate, the parking roads. I really got to look through that. 
But here we have the road maintenance depot. So road maintenance depot houses maintenance vehicles. They travel around the city to boost roads, allowing travel at higher than normal speeds. So again, don't think of this as your roads being red because they're bad. Think of it as they're going to be green and better. So I've got kind of this this little uh, this little road I did out here. There is the uh, disaster response unit because I had so many uh, flooded buildings after I did my last little map mod. Um, I had to rebuild like the entire industrial island using this. Um, we've got a tank reservoir for excess water, and then we've got a pumping service to send trucks out to feed that back into the system. And if we have excess water, I, I've at this point turned off all my outlets. And, uh, and we have a tank reservoir, which will store water, so we don't need to suck up water if we have uh, excess or if we run out. Um, but here we've dropped in the road maintenance depot, and you can actually see, let's pause. You can see some of the trucks leaving now, little orange maintenance trucks. And as they, let's go over here, where is this one? You can kind of see like where the road maintenance depot can cover. So this is coverage. These are the roads that they will touch. So we'll have to, you know, put one over here, get one over here and over here. We'll drop some different road maintenance depots around. So this is where they cover. And then this is the condition. So as the trucks go on their routes, not unlike the snow plows work in snowfall, uh, this is going to basically improve the condition of the roads that it travels on. Uh, why it has no effect on highways, I'm not sure, but that's probably a thing. Uh, but you can see it's gonna allow any roads that it covers to, to basically traverse faster. And it eventually slows down over time and then the trucks go back out and they boost the performance again. So that's something that we can do within the game itself to help some of those traffic issues. So I will definitely make sure and spam some more of these around the map. And once we've got a pretty decent coverage and trucks are actually going out and kind of doing things for us, uh, that's when we want to... Where did the trucks go? Okay, it's over there. Is it only able to boost so much? Okay, once it drives the road. I couldn't figure out where it went. It doesn't affect highways, it looks like. So these are regular roads coming into highways. I fixed this a while back. I don't remember if I did this on camera, but it was a really wonky footbridge that was enabling people to, to cross the street here and, uh, and come over to the subway. And it looks like people like it. And it certainly looks a lot better now uh, that I've tightened it up a bit with Move It. But sorry, all over the place today. I think a lot of the last things, so escape routes, we don't have to worry about. We're not playing with disasters. Same with radio coverage and destruction, disaster detection, traffic routes. We certainly could um, get into this a little bit and, and this will be you know good for, for traffic analysis. But when we see kind of um, you know what's happening on certain roads, we look at the traffic of a particularly problematic intersection like say over here we can see kind of where people are going right what what kind of traffic is going where so we can see a lot of trucks that are turning right to go into the city uh, there's not a whole lot of traffic as you can see it's, I know it's tough to kind of tell in here uh, with the mess of arrows, but you can see there's not a lot of traffic that's trying to turn left. I did see a garbage truck in there. Let's actually look at that, because that could be something if garbage trucks are what's waiting to turn left here. And that's what's slowing down our intersections. So that garbage truck went right. This one is stopping, which leads me to believe that it is turning left. So yeah, so we've got a maybe move the recycling plant somewhere where the trucks aren't having to make that turn somewhere off a more efficient um more efficient exit than the diamond because that actually if we get all those trucks out of there that may stop that slowdown quite a bit since there the, looks like the majority of the trucks that are trying to go left uh move it highlight bulldoze it and let's get a new cemetery in there But back to info, we're pretty good here. So uh, tourism, this is kind of something that we can do more in depth. It looks like uh, this is a really popular area. Downtown's got some popular spots. Basically, it's commercial um, and parks and leisure and all those sorts of things that uh, that bring people in. 
it looks like track and field is very popular, as is uh, the basketball arena. Interesting. Is that a fire? No, that is a, uh, a crane. I thought this was a giant fire off in the distance. Uh, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. So, uh, anything left? I don't think so. Like, we'll take a look at tours and tourism, and and that will really kind of be its own its own separate thing. Post offices is something that um, I have not added in. Uh, we might look at it, but it introduces traffic itself, so it's not necessarily the best idea for uh, for pre uh, boosted roads, but. We'll see, and we'll kind of drop in. We, I think we've got a good idea for, for what to drop in um, when we do make a return here. So there's still a couple things that we can talk about before the end of the year, but that's about all for today. Um, I'm going to do a short video this Wednesday on Christmas. I hope everybody's having a good holiday season, hopefully getting some time off of work, getting to spend some time with family and friends, and hopefully get some gaming and YouTube in while you're at it. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, as always, likes, comments, and shares help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new, hit the bell to get notifications, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Have a wonderful week. Until the next one, Move the Mouse, signing off.